What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you the first league-wide recap in CWO Premier Season 3. All went down this weekend. We have all kinds of stats and attack replays to share with you guys. We're going to go ahead and look at each of the divisions, breaking down which clans are standing out and which clans are falling flat. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, guys, the very first division that we're going to be covering is the Wizard Division. One thing to take note of that I thought was interesting is all four of these clans are all making their CWO Premier debut, all four of them. Let's go ahead and start off at the very top where we have Above and Beyond, who did just that this weekend, who put up an astounding 86 stars, and they had three 10v10s. And they went 100% on their 11 v 10 dips. And they got the victory over King Jeffrey, uh, winning that 86 to 85. Definitely look out for Above and Beyond. Sitting in second place, uh, who also got the victory this weekend, they took on Art of War and also got the victory on a tie, uh, the tie being 82 to 82. TWSS coming on top against Art of War, and they did have three 10 v 10 triples this war. The only thing they have to work out and fix is their dips, but they are looking very strong going into week two. Uh, in third place in the Wizard Division, we have CWC Brawlers, who still put up a decent star total, guys. Uh, they put up 85 stars. They lost by one star to Gahazi Bomber 2, but regard 85 stars would have beat about 70% of the clans in this league. Uh, they still had a 10v10 triple, and they also went perfect on dips. So keep your eye out for CWC Brawlers. Again, they are newcomers into the league. Not a lot of people have heard about them, but they might be able to make a lasting impression if they keep uh, putting up those numbers like they did in week one. In fourth place, rounding out the Wizard Division, we have Meet the Kings, who fell quite flat, uh, only putting up 78 stars against From Molten Lava, and they had a total destruction of 91.6% so far this season, and yeah, and they did lose 78 uh, to From Molten Lava's 80, so they definitely have to tighten things up again uh, to continue pushing on through this league. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the attacks from the TWSS and Art of War matchup. All right, guys, here's the first attack we're going to be checking out in this recap. We have Aldo the Legend going to be taking on Kent Parker from Art of War. Going to be doing it with a Shattered Hobo. And you're just going to see some incredible value uh, that Aldo is going to be getting on this push right here. Going to be entering at about 2 o'clock into the base. Has a Baby Dragon up there at 12, just helping with the funnel. Nice wall breaker deployment to go ahead and get that wall opened up. He does have a Rage and a Jump spell that, that he's going to be using on this kill squad before he starts the hog portion. Here comes the enemy CC. He does have a poison for that loon and also a golem coming out of the enemy CC as well. And his goal here is to not only create a defense path for the hogs, but to also get the enemy archer queen and get one, if not two, Inferno Towers. Let's see how that pans out. Does still have the Archer Queen ability. Goes ahead and pops it right on time as that Inferno Tower was targeting her, but under that ability, she's able to snipe it. And here he's bringing all these hogs into this base, and he's also bringing hogs enemy CC. And this is really, really nice that I liked on this attack. Hasted hogs, guys, just to push him into that Inferno Tower that much faster. And coming out of the Inferno Tower does have a a heal spell waiting for those hogs down there at six o'clock and still has two more heal spells left to deploy and most of the point defense is already down at this point uh he goes ahead and drops down the second heal spell getting as much value as he can touching all the edges of those defenses and there's also a giant bomb uh that helped out those hogs survive right there under that heal spell and does have a third heal right there on the last remaining point defenses just an incredible attack laid out by Aldo the Legend. And again, guys, TWSS, not only brand new to the league, but a brand new clan that has been revamped. And they are back in it, picking up three 10v10s this war.
All right, next up is the Dragon Division, where we have Gunma Samurai taking the victory. Uh, they are in, currently in first place in this division, and they did take the victory over North Awakens, the final of that war, 85 to 82, beating North Awakens by three stars. Uh, they did have a 10v10 triple, and they also, something to note, they went perfect on their dip. So they're looking very strong going into week two, where they face a very tough Unius Exorcist. We'll have to see how that war pans out. In second place, we have Grumpy Old Men. It was a victory nonetheless, but they only put up 80 stars on the map. So if they want to continue winning wars, they're going to have to put up more stars than 80. Uh, they are going to be facing COC Hog Wars in week two. So we'll have to see how that war pans out. But again, they did get the victory. Uh, over Dragon Rejects, beating them 80 to 74. In third and fourth place in the Dragon Division, just to wrap this up, uh, we have Valar Mogulis and Reddit Viper, who both took losses in week one. They'll be looking to rebound in week two. Uh, still kind of early. We'll have to see what they bring to the table, but their heavy hitters are going to have to show up as well as their Town Hall 9s as well. So best of luck to both of them going into week two. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the replays captured from the Ganma Samurai War. All right, next attack we're going to check out. We have number eight from Gunma Samurai taking on Alf from North Awakens. And if you look down at the troop bar, kind of the theme uh, that we saw in the league is dragons, different dragon variations, as you guys are going to be seeing as this recap continues. Uh, just going to be suiciding both his heroes over at 9 and up at 12. Uh, goes ahead and sues the AQ, grabs that free air defense over there, shoots it right over the wall. Going to go ahead and keep number 8 is going to go ahead and kiwi walk up at 12 o'clock. Just has a few wizards to help him out, but will definitely get that air defense, uh, that cannon is just shooting the king. King doing a very good job distracting those point defenses and those wizards get that air defense down. No problems at all. He does have nine dragons he's going to be bringing along with this attack. Does have a camp hound and a hound that's going to be flying out of the CC. And you're going to see just a well-executed attack. I mean, mass dragons uh, bringing a few lava hounds or bringing a couple lava hounds. But wait till you guys see the pathing that these dragons take as they're just going to be making a straight line through this base from one end to the other. Uh, you'll see both of those uh, rage spells are down while the hounds are taking the air defenses. Goes ahead and drops the second two rages, and pretty much the dragon's in a perfect line, uh, just two-shotting those infernal towers. And you'll see he does have a heal spell to deploy, and he's basically going to be healing up all those dragons as they make their way into the back end of those five archer towers and where those two Teslas are on the back side of that town hall. So just a very well executed attack. Looks simple, but took a lot of strategy as far as having those dragons path the way they did. Very, very good attack from number eight. Let's go ahead and check out the very next division. All right, guys, next up, we're going to cover the Baby Dragon Division. And if you take a look, this was the only division in Premier where all four clans suffered a loss in week one. Starting off at the top, uh, we have BD Unbeatables technically in first place right now in Baby Dragon Division. And they uh, they did suffer a one-star loss against a very tough Dark Avengers clan. Uh, they did still manage to put up 83 stars on the map, considering they didn't have a 10v10 triple. Uh, however, their 10v11 game was very, very impressive, comparable uh, percentage-wise to the rest of the league. And they only had one dip fill. So they do have something to build off of. They face CWC Brawlers in week two. In second place, we have Gotoborg's Krieger, who faced uh, One Hive Genesis. They did take a three-star loss, losing 81 to 84. They did put up a 10v10 triple that war. Uh, but what really got to them was their dip fails. And their, their schedule does not get any easier as they do face Above and Beyond next. So in third place, we have Swarm Synergy, who, I mean, despite putting up 
three 10v10 triples. They only put 82 stars on the board. Uh, they did take a one star loss as they faced Forbidden in week in week t in week one. And the final in that war was 83 to 82 uh, against Swarm Synergy, taking the loss. And where they have to clean it up is their 10 v 11 game. And in week two, they're going to be facing what appears to be a struggling Meet the Kings. And rounding off the Baby Dragon division in fourth place, we have Assassin's Core, who took a three-star loss against Nottingham in week one. And Assassin's Core only managed to put up 79 stars on the board. Definitely have to clean it up. However, they did have a 10 v 10 triple, but they did have three dip fails. Uh, now, now that go, now that rounds out the Baby Dragon division. Let's go ahead and check out some action from the Healer division. Making our way over to the Healer division, uh, some very, very impressive clans emerging from the Healer division already. We'll go ahead and start off from the top, taking a look at Gahazi Bomber 2. Impressed to say the least, uh, they did put up three 10v10 triples against CWC Brawlers, and they only suffered one dip fail. And take a look, guys, at their total destruction, putting up 94.33% against CWC Brawlers. And so very looking very, very good for Gahazi Bomber 2, and they're going to be taking on uh, Dark Avengers and what's going to be a very, very interesting war uh, coming up in week two. Look out for that one. In second place, we have From Molten Lava, who did take a, a two-star victory over, again, what appears to be a struggling Meet the Kings. Uh, From Molten Lava, similar to Grumpy Old Men, only put up 80 stars on the map, but got the victory nevertheless. They also had two 10v10 triples that war. So they also have something to build off of going into week two where they're going to be facing a very tough Forbidden Clan. Uh, so we'll have to see how that war pans out in week two. In third place, uh, one of the most interesting matchups of the week uh, where King Jeffrey uh, went head-to-head -head against Above and Beyond. And King Jeffrey in third place taking that loss by one star, guys. Uh, a couple things to note from that war is they had three 10v10 triples that war. They also went four for six in uh, their 10v11 department, which was the best in Premier League uh, percentage-wise, uh, their hit rate percentage, 10v11, but they did have one dip fail that ended up costing them the war. And if you look at the total destruction compared, uh, for example, to From Mont Lava, King Jeffrey had 93.73% total destruction, and they're going to be taking on uh, One Hive Genesis in Week 2, also a very interesting matchup and a war that many people should be paying close attention to. And rounding off in fourth place in the healer division where we have Art of War, who seemed to fall flat in the 10v10 department. Uh, they did take the loss uh, against TWSS. However, it was a loss on total destruction. The final of that war was 82 to 82, just missing it. Uh, something that they can build off of going into week two is they went perfect on their dips. Uh, there's only a, a select few clans who went perfect. They were one of them. However, they did take the loss against a very tough or what appears to be a very tough TWSS clan. And Art of War is going to be taking on Nottingham in week two. Let's go ahead and check out some replays. I got one from the Gahazi Bomber 2 War and one replay from the From Molten Lava War. All right, guys, here is a replay from the first place leader in the healer division where we have... Number seven gonna be taking on N Hell. N Hell from CWC Brawlers. And yet again, guys, check it out. Doing it with a drag Lalo. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, we'll see up at the top sending both heroes up at 12 o'clock. And there's also a Lalo portion going on uh, down there at about seven. He did break the queen in up at 12 o'clock to pick up two air defenses. And the Lalo portion with just two haste takes out the other remaining two air defenses. And as 
as you guys are going to see this attack develop, you're going to see a perfect funnel for the Dragons. Again, the theme that we're seeing across the league is how dominant uh, Dragons are right now. You'll see that baby drag right there at about 8 o'clock, uh, just, just helping funnel all these Dragons in. And you can see the, the, the funnel for the Dragons from 9 o'clock pretty much all the way over to 3. You can see the funnel created that these Dragons have no to go but inside the center of this base uh, goes ahead and drops down a free spell as well where he catches the enemy queen uh, and that expo as well so got really, really good value uh, from that freeze. And he does have a heal spell uh, that he has in that core right there. And he does still have two raid spells uh, to deploy as well. And look at the value he got from those loons. Uh, not only taking out defenses, but also soaking up traps as they were making their way through this base right here. Uh, take a close eye. That baby drag that he helped set the funnel to start off this attack is still up, guys. That's when you know you're getting when you're squeezing every ounce of value out of your troops and you'll see just like that he'd also had a max dragon coming out of the cc and a pair of loons to help it out and wipe that base out really really nice hit by number seven from gahazi bombers All right, guys, next up, we're going to check out some action from the From Molten Lava War. And what a nice attack we have to share with you guys. Uh, and not attack you see every day. Going to be doing it with a Queen Walk uh, Boner attack. And to many people's surprise, there were not that many minor attacks. This was actually one of the rare cases. Uh, again, to many people's surprise, I thought there was going to be a lot more uh, minor attacks, but there just wasn't. Uh, you see the Queen is going to be starting up there at about two o'clock heading up towards the north at 12 and she's gonna be wrapping around you'll see the kill squad down here it was a cb kill squad uh followed up by about five or six camp bowlers and also a rage uh just trimming all that trash also getting good value taking out some those bowlers taking out some defenses as well uh also assisted by the king uh you'll see right here at about three o'clock is where tasty went ahead and deployed all of his miners and he does have three heal spells that he's going to be using um, on the miners as they make their way into the core queen is still alive up there taking out defenses and trimming trash again similar to a dragon attack making sure that those troops stay inside of the base uh, there was a loon that came out of the cc and uh, he went ahead and took care of that with a poison. So you'll see right here, miners just, uh, it just seems like he's going to be ending with more miners than he began with. Uh, they already have made their way three force into the second and final infernal tower they're about to cl collapse on that he has so many miners they're pretty much going to one shot that inferno tower last two defenses to go down are going to be those two teslas uh queen goes ahead and pops the hound at the very end of the raid very very nice attack to tasty on this one all right, next up, we have what appears to be a very competitive wall breaker division. A few clans out of this division already turning heads. Starting off with War Addicts in first place uh, with a total destruction of 94.27%. Very impressive. They took down COC Hog Wars in week one, beating them 82 to 81, winning by a one star differential. And what was more impressive. Uh, despite the low score from this war is they had four 10v10 triples this war. Uh, with that being said, they did have a few dip fails and their 10v11 game did hurt them quite a bit, which we have been seeing throughout the league so far. And they, they're going to look to increase that record, uh, where they're going to be challenging, uh, grumpy old men in week two. We'll have to stay tuned to see how that war plays out. In second place, we have the newcomers, not only to the league, but a new clan in general. Uh, we have Unius Exercitus, uh, again, already turning heads. They put up, uh, they managed to put up 86 stars on the boards, guys, uh, clearing all Town Hall 10s on the map. And they did have two 10v10 triples that war. And they took down a formidable clan, Axu something, who were the MLCW Grand Warden Division champions uh, just last season 
in the MLCW and beating them by three stars. Uh, so definitely look out for this clan. And like I mentioned in the when I when we were recapping Gun Moss Samurai, uh, this is going to be the war of the week for week two. Uh, Unius Exorcitus taking on Gun Moss Samurai. Definitely pay attention to this war, guys. It is going to be a good one. And in third place, we have FYSB who took down Dark Looter X and beating them by a two-star differential, a final 86 to 84. And FYSB also put up three 10v10 triples that war. So they are out for revenge as they were the runner-ups back in season two in CWO Premier. So they're just of good a clan, if not better. And they're coming back and they're in it to win it, guys. Uh, pay attention to FYSB. And they're going to look to increase their record where they're going to be challenging Reddit Viper in week two. And rounding off in fourth place of in the wall breaker division, we have what appears to be so far a struggling emphatic fury, only putting up 82 stars against bad intentions. However, bad intentions did have an 11 v 11 triple that war. So emphatic fury would have won if bad intentions didn't get that 11 v 11 triple. But with all that being said, they did not have a 10 v 10 that war are definitely going to have to put up numbers if they want to continue to win, especially in a competitive division as competitive as the wall breaker division is appearing to be now let's go ahead and check out a replay from the FYSB and the war addicts wars all right next attack we're going to look at we got sparky from war addicts going to be taking on jonathan from coc hog wars so not only is this a dragon attack guys like i said uh they're coming in all shapes and sizes now doing it with a zap quake grabbing one air defense dropping down a few loons to go ahead and take out the other air defense up there at 12 o'clock and just had to drop one hay spell to get those loons in there and you'll see he's going to do a nice mini Kiwi walk. And he's going to suicide his AQ in here. Baby Dragon on the Elixir Pump at 4. Uh, just starting a nice funnel to make sure that Queen goes in. Wall Breakers down. Wait till you guys see the value uh, that Sparky is going to be getting from his Archer Queen. Already took out one air defense. Took out an Archer Tower. After the Bomb Tower goes down. Going to snipe the 4th and final air defense. Dragon's already down. And he does have loons coming out of the cc those max level seven balloons and even without a popping uh popping the queen ability snipes the inferno tower guys talk about value uh does have a first rage down pretty much raging up every single dragon that he's deployed and followed up by a heal spell as those dragons make their way through the core uh notice those cc loons guys are still up absorbing traps and they're going the balloon crash ends up taking out uh that max expo up there that led uh, right before the inferno tower compartment and he's and sparky still has one rage to deploy look at all the dragons that he has uh final rage uh, dropped right before those archer towers uh, just trying to speed everything up here just getting good value uh do, it does have that one drag up there. It is going to go down to that Inferno Tower uh, before it can get a couple shots off. But look at the wad of dragons that he has. Way too much for this base to handle considering there's just an Inferno Tower. Uh, one Archer Tower and a Tesla left. He has to have at least seven dragons remaining on this attack. Just a beautiful attack by Sparky doing it with a Zap Quake Sui Hero Mass Dragon Attack. All right, next attack uh, that we have for you guys is we have Han Solo coming out of FYSB taking on Zach Braff from Dark Looters X. He's just going to do an insane Queen Charge Lalo on this attack. Uh, you'll see right up there at 12 o'clock where he's starting off as Queen and just funneling her uh, with a single minion. Uh, so just going to get really, really good value uh, from this charge right here as you guys are going to see and got really good value from that minion as well uh just one minion to set the funnel to make sure that queen goes the right way uh, you'll see king is down just getting rid of all this trash uh making sure that queen goes inside that compartment that he went ahead and broke with those wall breakers uh, so he's just going to get tons of value from this queen charge archer tower down uh, going to be working on that expo as well 
And he's going to go ahead and drop a rage as he's going to be meeting the enemy queen and the CC as well. Uh, we do have a golem loon coming out of the enemy CC. And just going to have to work on that. Poison goes ahead and drops the loon before it can do any damage. And under rage, uh, just a few shots is going to go ahead and pop this golem before she starts working on those golemites. And you've already, and up there at a about two o'clock he's already dropped down a couple more wall breakers to go ahead and pop that wall where this charge is going to continue uh goes ahead and drops down a few more wall breakers there there it goes right there the triple layer wall break from han solo uh second rage finally down as he does want to get that queen into that compartment where that inferno tower is goes ahead and snipes the wizard tower and up on the upper left hand side of the base is where the lalo portion is starting does have a camp hound and a hound that came out of the cc uh, so far just dropped one haste followed up by a rage uh, to push all those loons into that inferno tower uh, second haste down as those balloons are making their way over those air defenses uh, still has one more haste to deploy after he drops the second rage for the Lalo portion. And they're just collapsing on all those defenses. Check out the queen still at full health. Charge still going very well. And just got tons of value uh, from that queen charge. Pretty much splitting the base right in half. Uh, queen going from 12 o'clock down to 3. The Lalo portion taking out the rest. And just a beautiful attack. Queen is going to clean it up with the help of a few pups and minions. Very nice attack from Hans solo from FYSB. All right, next up is the minor division and all the clans in the minor division, as you guys see, all took victories. So all four of these clans match the four clans coming from the baby dragon division and all four were, were victorious. Starting off at the top, one hive genesis already turning heads. They put up three 10 v 10 triples and got the victory over Göteborg's Kriga, 84 to 81, winning by three stars. So definitely keep your guys' eye out for what seems to be a rebuilt uh, One Hive Genesis. And they're going to be taking on King Jeffrey. It's going to be a very, very interesting war. So definitely pay attention to this one as well. In second place, we have Forbidden, who took on Swarm Synergy. And they also put up three 10v10 triples. So very impressive clans coming out of the minor division so far. And we have uh, we have Forbidden going to be taking on From Molten Lava. So very, very interesting war. And will be very interesting to see how that one plays out. In third place where we have Nottingham, a uh, clan out of Japan. Uh, in week two, they're going to be taking on what seems to be a struggling art of war as far as 10v10s go. We do know that Nottingham had one 10v10 triple. However, they had three dip fails. Uh, they, Nottingham did get the victory over Assassin's Corps, beating them 82 to 79. So they have the 10v10 triples, but they have dip fails. And you have Art of War who didn't have any 10v10s, but went perfect on dips. So very curious to see how this war plays out in week two and rounding off the bottom we have dark avengers in fourth place but also victorious uh beating bd unbeatables 84 to 83 and dark avengers did have one 10 v 10 triple this war looking to rebound uh from their performance in season two and they're out for a vengeance uh, considering what happened and the loss they took in the playoffs. So definitely pay attention to the four clans coming out of the minor division. Now let's go ahead and check out a replay from One Hive Genesis. All right, here we're going to have Devin taking on Solid. And it's going to be doing it with a Shattered Hobo. Uh, we did see a few of these attacks throughout the league. And it has proven to be a very, very strong attack. And more importantly, looking at One Hive Genesis from what they were, not only in Season 1 when they were an invite, where they flopped, you had them in Season 2, uh, who were the only clan that made it into the playoffs below 500, more or less on default, uh, with clans being banned 
uh, and or dropping out, pushing them into the playoffs where they didn't make it past the first round to something like this. It's interesting to see how this clan has rebuilt themselves to many people's surprise. Again, coming from where they were in the other two seasons in their CWO career, if you will, putting up a solid three 10v10 triples. So this is one of the three right here. Uh, he started off at the upper left-hand side uh, with a heavy sh uh, shattered kill squad and just going to be dropped, basically cut the base in half and his kill squad, guys, gets both Inferno Towers down. Talk about value. Uh, King went ahead and took out the second Inferno Tower, starting off hogs uh, between 2 and 3 o'clock, doing a nice two-finger drop, uh, sending in all those hogs. Did have uh, heal spells healing them up through the bottom as they were taking on quite a few defenses, uh, point defenses. Last heal is covering every single last defense down there at 7 o'clock and, and has all kinds of wizards cleaning up. Very well executed attack by Devin on this one. And I'm very curious to see how One Hive Genesis does in the rest of the league. But based off of this war, definitely looking promising for OHG. All right, next division we're going to take a look at is the P.E.K.K.A. division, where we have our High Slakes sitting in first place after their victory in week one over Valar Mugulis, the final 113 to 108. And just based off of the score, you can tell that that was a 40v40, the only 40v40 in the league all the other 15 matchups were 30 v 30s so var high slake definitely flexing showing the depth of their roster and not only that putting up four 10 v 10 triples that uh for putting up four 10 v 10 triples that war and in week two they are going to be facing bad intentions in second place we have cornfeld uh, who beat Reddit Viper on a tie, 82 to 82 was the final, beating them on total destruction. However, they did have a 10v10 triple and an 11v11 triple that we're going to take a look at and a look at here in just a minute. Uh, but where they suffered was their 10v11 game. But making with what do, they were able to net two stars in just the last few minutes of the war with that 11 v 11 triple. And they're going to be taking on DLX, uh, both German clans going head to head in week two. We'll definitely have to see how that war plays out. In third place, we have North Awakens, who took a three star loss against a very tough Gunma Samurai, uh, losing. 85 to 82 however they did have two 10v10 triples that war but where they fell flat were with the dip fails and in week two they're going to be taking on axe you something uh, in third place we have dragon rejects sitting in the last place spot 32 out of 32 uh, currently ranked where they only put up 74 stars guys uh, they're definitely going to have to figure out where they're at and adjust what they have to adjust uh, to start putting some more stars up on the board. 74 stars will not win you a war in Premier. Definitely going to have to clean it up and figure out what they need to work on to start putting more stars on the map. And they're going to be taking on COC Hog Wars uh, coming up in week two. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the 11v11 triple coming from the Kornfeld War. All right, and here's the 11v11 triple coming from Kornfeld. We have Jaman, Jaman Dolo taking on Superman from Reddit Viper. Uh, one thing to take note of is there were only two 11v11 triples. Uh, around the entire league, this being one of them, probably not the way they wanted it to play out considering they they literally had to three-star this Town Hall 11 as it had only previously been one-starred by Town Hall 10 from this war. They went ahead and made the decision to do the 11v11 attempt and doing it with Sui Hero Lalo as you guys are watching it play on your screen. And they ended up beating Reddit Viper on a tie again winning 82 to 82 uh, just by a slight margin but getting the job done nevertheless and doing it in style uh, with this Lalo 
uh, dropped, I believe, four if not five haste down on the bottom right hand side when he went ahead and started the lalo portion and just ended up completely crushing this base guys uh just has a few defenses left being those two teslas and that pair of wizard towers balloons are going to go ahead and collapse on that inferno tower and there's actually one more inferno tower this is what i really enjoyed look at the value he's going to get from this baby dragon that's the last troop uh that jaman dolo has left to deploy once the trash clears at the bottom at five o'clock and seven he's going to precisely drop that baby dragon so it directly targets that inferno tower absolutely insane there it goes ends up taking out the inferno tower a very well executed attack and getting there's only two cornfeld picking up one 11 v 11 triple this war and good job to them all right guys, last division that we're gonna cover before we wrap up this video is none other than the balloon division where we have bad intentions sitting at the very top all by themselves in first place. Uh, the only victorious clan walking away from the balloon division in week one is bad intentions where they put up 83 stars against emphatic fury uh, being them 83 to 82 and not only that putting up two 10 v 10s and an 11 v 11 triple which we're going to go ahead and look at once we round out the rest of the clans in the balloon division very exciting stuff coming from them and they are going to be taking on var high slake in week two moving on to dark looter sitting in second place uh, where they took on a very challenging FYSB, losing that war 84 or 86 to 84, a two star differential. They had to get an 11 v 11 triple in order to win that war uh, to win on total destruction. We're not able to get it done, but they still put up three 10 v 10s. Do not count Dark Looter X out as we already know how strong these clans are coming from the Dark Looters family. And they're going to be taking on Kornfeld, which will be a very interesting matchup. So definitely be on the lookout for that one, as Kornfeld was the only other clan next to Bad Intentions who had an 11v11 triple in week one. In third place, we have Axu Something, who also suffered a loss, losing by three stars to Unius Exercitus. Uh, the final was 86-83. to 83. They did have one 10v10 triple. They put up a decent amount of stars, but Unius Exertius still walked away with the victory. Uh, Axu Something will be looking to rebound against North Awakens in Week 2. And rounding off the balloon division in fourth place, we have COC Hog Wars, who took the loss against War Addicts, who was very impressive. Remember, War Addicts put up four 10v10 triples. However, COC Hog Wars didn't have any uh, Town Hall 10 triples and only managed to put up 81 stars against them. And they're going to be looking to rebound against a very struggling Dragon Reject. So we'll be curious to see how this clan performs in week two. Now let's go ahead and look at the 11 v 11 triple coming out of Bad Intentions. All right, here's a look at the second 11 v 11 triple throughout the entire league of Premier, uh, also doing it with a Sui Hero Lalo, uh, just like we saw out of Kornfeld. So it's looking like the Lalo 11 v 11 looking very strong right now. Uh, just going to go ahead and do a Sui Hero on this one. Wall Breakers down over at 9 o'clock uh, in hopes to take out that air defense and the enemy queen as well as start a nice defense path for the Lolo portion. You can see the nice air defense layout uh, where the pathing is going to look pretty good uh, for the Hound Loon portion. So we have Red taking on O Shag Hennessy. Oh, Shag Hennessy, very, very nice uh, from Emphatic Fury. 
And look at the value he got from the Sui Hero part, taking out that entire 9 o'clock portion of the base. Here comes the Lalo portion starting up at 12. You see those Max Hounds coming out, uh, overwhelming that air defense. Look at all the balloons. Warden behind, uh, followed up by just a few haste. Still has a heal, a rage, and a freeze to deploy. Nice Warden ability as they're making their way to that first Inferno Tower, followed up by a rage, freezing the Inferno. Inferno Tower on the back end of the base, also catching both of the Expos, although one of them is on ground, the other one is pointed up to the sky, uh, but a nice free spell nevertheless, and all defenses are down at this point, Red completely smashing uh, this Town Hall 11, very, very nice attack coming out of bad intentions, and we'll see how they're going to do in the rest of the season. All right, guys, well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed all of the content, all of the attacks. Uh, very, very impressive clans already emerging from CWL Season 3. Uh, we've seen clans standing out from the crowd, and we've seen a few clans struggling. We'll have to wait and see what happens in Week 2, but definitely look forward to more CWL Premier content coming your way. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.